Good morning. You are listening to Evidence on CIUT 89.5 FM. I am Andrea Duff. Good morning on this Thanksgiving weekend. Today on Evidence, we will be talking to Kala Lachance, the Executive Director of Neighborhood Dance Works, about the 21st um, Festival of New Dance. But prior to speaking with her, we are going to talk to Marie-José Chartier from Montreal. Hello, Marie. Hey, hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, good I'm good, thank you. How, how nice is it there in Montreal today? Oh, actually, right now I'm somewhere else. I'm in between. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, are you away for the weekend? Uh, a little bit, yeah. That's amazing. Still working somehow, but uh, yeah, taking a little bit of time off. I'm Before jealous. the big week starts. Yeah, uh, well, I bet, right? Yeah. So yeah. when do you come to Toronto? Uh, tomorrow, uh, tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. excellent. So you have this new work. Stria, yes. is that correct? Yes, Stria, yes. And it's based on your experience with the Badlands. Well, part of it. Okay. Um, it's actually a little bit, um, it's a full evening work. It's a self-portrait. And I worked on it for about three years. Uh, well, on and off, obviously, with, um, while doing other projects. And um, so it's a, kind of a, a way of um, recollecting uh, many different stories and events that were uh, fairly personal, but uh, over time it's been distilled and uh, rendered in a completely different way through uh, different disciplines that I've been practicing for about 30 years, which is a movement and voice and text. And uh, also from that I'm, I'm uh, creating a parallel between the stria, which are kind of strata lines that we have in the body of history that we, we keep inside and that some of them get fossilized with experiences that I've had in uh, some landscapes, and one of which is, uh, has been very, um, uh, let's say, uh, transformative for me was uh, the Alberta Badlands is a land that I love very much. And then when you're there, you really witness all the rock with the millions of, of years that have gone by and the fossils. So for me, it's a parallel between the two. But it's also about the kind of environment of the Badlands have helped me create the structure for the work. So it's actually a pretty wild ride <laughs> uh, during the show. It really goes to a lot of places and um, is very colorful and pretty virtuosic. <laughs> what brought you to the Badlands to begin with? Sorry? What brought you to the Badlands to begin oh, with? Oh, in my, uh, in my, in my uh, in-laws, they, uh, they uh, live there uh, around that area, and uh, my husband's cousin is a paleontologist, Oh. and uh, I was able to go on two uh, long excursions, uh, one in the early 90s, I think, and one in 2007. And uh, we're actually able to go places where most tourists, well, the tourists are not allowed to go. Oh. So basically, there are four of us for nine hours, and you don't see anyone, you don't hear anything. And uh, we were dinosaur hunting, <laughs> as we like to of say. Of course. It. So finding dinosaur bones and teeth, and uh, and the terrain changes quite a bit. So it's, um, again, is for the structure of the work and for the structure of emotions and what we call in French, état d'âme, which is the kind of translate the soul states is that like I said before is the first I started with very concrete things about myself and then I e extracted them and made them more into either character studies or emotional studies or you know so um, just like as we go you know during a day sometimes our feelings change and can change quite drastically depending something reminds us of something and then I could put us in a particular mood and so this is kind of as, in my, as if I'm traveling the terrain, uh, mm -hmm. things are emerging from the soil or, you know, I mean, it's metaphoric, but yes. for us in order, it was very tricky in order how to create a, a, a structure for this piece. So it was not linear because life is not actually linear. Right. And, uh, but at the same time that um, people are really connected with what I'm doing and it's clear also what's going on. We worked very hard at making things quite clear so that there's a, a sense that the, the audience can travel on the journey with me. Well, the the whole um, idea in itself is very adaptable and very um, available to most yes, people. Yes, I, I, I premiered the work in, uh, in April in Peterborough, mm -hmm. and I've had very diverse audiences. I even had children that came, which I didn't expect, and... Uh, and the uh, yeah, it was uh, there's there's definitely different people at different ages or different backgrounds really connect with different elements in the piece. So that was quite a nice surprise for me, actually. 
and there's a quite a large uh, native community as well in Peterborough and uh, one of the women said she said I was like a shapeshifter oh. and, and I thought okay this makes sense because of, of you know there's also a lot of elements of nature in the show as like there's a storm and there's you know the the set is really gorgeous with fossils inside and, and sometimes it looks like the nervous system sometimes it looks like an electric fence sometimes it looks like strias depending on the lighting and so it really it really um you know the terrain really shifts this has you said earlier started for you about 30 years ago well uh, work, well it's, ish. It, the piece i started putting the piece together about 3 years ago but the experience. But it's thirty years of my. I've been in the business for about thirty years, so yeah. it's my experiences as a as a performer. Also, I really had a desire to bring together my expertise in the different fields because I work a lot with contemporary music as well and with voice, and so I felt like, well, this is how I want to do this. I want to maybe this moment I really want to express it with voice because I think at that moment that those sounds is really what's going to express. Uh, this particular part that I'm thinking about. Right. So I'm not trying to be vague, but it's just, you know, sometimes I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to say too much. I think it's uh, important for me, too, that people get their own images because right. it's, very, it's very, very imagistic uh, during the performance. Does this and feel like um, a culmination of everything in your career to this point? Does this? Well, exactly. Like it's uh, In fact, I have uh, I have been working with a director, fantastic director, Ruth Maddock-Jones. Oh, she is uh, excellent. Oh, she's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Thomas Ryder-Payne, who did the sound, and Bonnie Beecher, lighting. I mean, I've got an incredible team. And, uh, you know, we, we agreed that there's about two shows in there. And we, I had to eliminate a lot of things that we really loved, but we couldn't. There just was too much. Right. So we had to make some harsh decisions on what to keep, <laughs> you know. And it's it's been uh, so even if I premiered here in April because I had residencies here, we've been reworking it again and you know and quite a lot and finding new things and deepening actually and tightening and looking at the rhythm of the work, and uh, so it's been quite a uh, quite profound <laughs> as an experience. Do you feel the material that you had to let go of at this time? Will you revisit it? I think it's in me, you know. I think it. I, I actually. Uh, I think it will resurface in in maybe other pieces uh, under something else completely different. <laughs> yes. I, I believe that um, you know all the work we do. You know, again, it's like a tree. It settles some t- somewhere in your mm-hmm. body as, as another line, as another layer. Yes. Uh, it's very much about layers. Basically, the piece is all about unearthing all these layers, and I think some of the things that. Um, I haven't been, I haven't had a chance to be present in the piece. Will um, make its way somewhere or not? But I think it's all information that will helps us to continue as creators, uh, eventually. Um, in regards to the layering, I mean, it was humans. We're all layered, and as we get older, we have all these experiences, and they help define us. Or, uh, do you find that dance is a therapy for you in a way, or is it def- is it separate? Um. I think it's all. I think it's all part of who we are. Whatever it is that we choose to do, uh, I know that for me, when I started dancing quite late, um, it was kind of an escape for something else. It might have started that way, mm-hmm. uh, but then I found it a place for me to be uh, to really uh, that fitted my personality. Um, I think that you know, I mean, writers, visual artists, uh, actors, playwrights. I mean, composers. I mean, it's it's definitely a part of us i mean we can you know we can call it therapy and people who have a hobby it's a form of therapy yes. i guess i mean it's just a it's just a way to you know basically i think deal with life and how we want to get through it and uh which is i think is a lot of work yeah <laughs> it's a lot of work and uh i feel fairly lucky that um i've been able to uh work through this through creation and uh, being inspired by other artists as well and fantastic collaborators. So I started choreographing quite a while ago, and, uh, you know, there were different expressions of, of myself or my environment or what was going on at the time. And I think the, 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 the hard part or the more sophisticated part is how do we find a way to, um, to shape this right. for the stage and for an audience and not just a blah, you know, right. just <laughs> like, like, I mean... I'm, 
sometimes maybe it has been done that way, but for me it's not that interesting. I, I'm I'm very interested in composition and how um, I'm greatly influenced by visual art, and I've it's really inspired me a lot. Most of my work, like this one, is unusual because it comes from a different place, but um, I'm very very interested in in composition and dynamic and tension, like you see in a in a painting or in a sculpture, and and for me it's like uh, that's how I how I look at my work at, on the stage, like a really big canvas. And it's, I'm always looking at how those elements, composition, interact, and also the rhythm of the piece is super important, and uh, the details, the content, and also the whole emotional layer f- as well. Is I can't really get away from that because right. it's, uh, yeah. So it's about communicating something to the audience and hopefully making them feel uh, better for that one hour they're in the theater. <laughs> Make them feel, mm-hmm. think about other things. I don't know. You know, it's a uh, it's uh, for me. It's a, almost a theater. I see it as a stranger, as a place of rest, as a place that we, uh, oasis that we can come to, and then uh, re- experience something quite wonderful. Even if the piece is very dark, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, really heavy, or it's it's it, it's a place to be and to kind of recollect and maybe you know when obviously it's a a, a good performance or a, an interesting subject matter. How. Did you come across any personal roadblocks in all of this? I mean, if you're dealing with some heavy personal material. Oh, well, that's where Ruth came in. <laughs> I was really, it's really, I've done uh, several solos before, mm-hmm. but they were more specifically about uh, maybe an, uh, m- more, I don't want to say specifically about an element, but, uh, well, they weren't full hour solos, but still they were half hour solos. But um, this one, the task I gave myself for this one was very monumental. And uh, it was the very, especially the first year and a half, like whenever I would go in for two, three weeks to work, it was uh, very, very, very demanding for me emotionally. Um, I'm actually a very emotionally balanced person, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank God. But uh, uh, it, it was it was tiring. I mean, the thing is, it was just exhausting. And the physical exhaustion that doesn't come from you know, dancing too much or climbing a mountain or <laughs> walking right. too far, the physical exhaustion from from digging, from, from really digging emotionally. So there would be days I could, you know, hardly do anything because I was so tired, and other days, it, you know, I was energized. And, um, yeah, so working with Ruth uh, as a director and dramaturge as well helped me to see through it, you know, and then it becomes part of you. Then it's not such a big deal, and we you go into because there are really some in the piece. There's some really, really big moments that are very intense, and uh, but I can tap into them right now. Like it's so clear what they're about. I can just go mm-hmm. and tap into them. So it's not the same kind of process as when you're creating. Mm-hmm. And I always find performing extremely liberating. <laughs> it's like that's almost the easy part once we get there because now we're for me it energizes me to to have an audience right. and to. And finally, okay, now I, you know, it's, there's a certain efficiency once you, you know, if you're well prepared, there's a certain efficiency. So by the time you're on stage, you, you know where you're going and you're, and, and leaving l- moments for improvisation, I always leave loose parts because I, I want to, um, it's important for me to be in the moment in the piece and, and see what happens at that moment. I think that's actually quite brave. I like that idea. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess it's brave. For me, that's where the play and the joy, actually the pleasure comes into, is I, I don't want everything prescribed. I mean, I say that, and at the same time, we've sculpted, we, the, the, every moment is so sculpted, like in terms of sound and lights and even where I am on stage and what I'm doing. But the most important thing, and this is a big discussion I have with, we have Ruth and I is about location. Where am I on stage at all times in my in the imaginary world? And when it's clear to me, it's clear to the audience. So the discussions and the details of every everything in that 62 minutes is yeah. just is been uh, stripped and analyzed. And but then the audience will feel something more uh, poetic or something that flows or something that's jarring. But uh, this has been our main concern. Make sure that whatever it is, it's really clear for me and for, for Ruth and, and, and for the collaborators in terms of how do we approach the sound. And the sound will have surround sound as well, so sounds will travel 
there's some of my text that's being spoken that I'm speaking and for example there's I transform into animals and you know there's just yeah. a lot of and I also have a puppet which oh. repre- represents me at the age of 10 so that was another whole layer I had to learn also how to work with <laughs> and again instead of on. telling stories her role in this has very uh, beautiful poetic um, she's kind of the when she comes in she kind of gives us a not gives us a break, but there's a whole other place that we go to with her, and uh, again creates dynamically different different kind of journey. Why did you choose yourself at ten? Uh, because a lot of my memories as a child are around ten years old. That's when I went into boarding school, okay. and I lived in a boarding school. And it seems that I, it's like before ten, I hardly remember anything. And so I I say ten ten years old is about a year that I remember a lot of things. And that's where that whole boarding school uh, time started for me, and it was very, uh, uh, it really marked me a lot uh, on many, on many, in many ways. So it's just, you know, she looks like a knight. I don't know. People will see what she looks like, but <laughs> it's kind of she. I worked with someone in Montreal who's a puppet maker, a well, creaturist, and he makes amazing. And he he kind of replicated me at that age. So it's a, it's a, there's some moments that are very, very tender and some that are really playful and some that are rough, you know. And uh, so it's all told through, mostly through choreography with her and, and some text, bilingual text. It's French and English uh, is woven throughout the whole piece. When you started working with her, did you how disconnected or connected did you feel to yourself at that time? Well, I had to learn how to <laughs> feel connected. It was it was a choice that I it's something that came into my mind very spontaneously one day and I thought, "Okay, I I I need this. I right. I don't want to be I don't want to talk about it. I want to to have this other person with me, but I mean, I see she looks like me at ten, but in fact, a lot of people have seen the piece and seen rehearsals, and it's like my alter, also my alter ego, and it's uh-huh. about me looking at me, you know, it's looking at one's life, and we can go into the whole existentialist thing, right? But that's basically what it is for me too, right? It's not just, it's not a, it's not really the child because I was. I was a very old soul when I was young already anyway. So for me, it's she's kind of wise in the piece. There's a very wise sense to her. Yes. And um, so, I mean, the challenge for me was technically how to learn how to work with a puppet. And again, Ruth had experience with that. So oh. it's a, yeah, it's a whole other, yeah, I really appreciate puppeteers now a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I did before, but now I'm like, yes. So you have uh, you have voice, you have uh, visuals, you have uh, sound. visual. It's in in terms of set, yeah. Um, and now you have puppet and so choreography. No, and chore- well, and obviously choreography. And choreography. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a lot of elements. Yeah, yeah, but it's all integrated because that's all part of who I am. And right. um, and I've have a lot of experience working. Um, you know, for ten years, for I've already for ten years now. I work a lot with contemporary opera and music as a director and so I work between Toronto and Montreal with different groups and that travel all over the world and so I've that's very much part that all these elements are really part of who I am so um, they're naturally integrated so when I work with singers I coach them in movement and you know so that's kind of trying to bring all this to be about performance about the performative body if you can say it that way how did you come to work with Ruth uh, both uh, Ruth and I worked on an uh, opera called Stitch. Oh. And uh, Ruth was the director, and I was brought in to help with all the movement and the choreography. Yeah. And so we met in rehearsal. Okay. And that was the only project we did. And almost uh, almost a year later, I was uh, thinking about uh, which di- which person would be a good person to f- to help me in this journey. And um, I thought about Ruth because she was amazing in terms of uh, knowing about movement and dramaturgy and text and clown, because there's a lot of, I have also a, a lot of clowning elements in the show, um, you know, the, the, the inside, the right. <laughs> internal clown. And, uh, and I really connected with her and how she looked at work, and she's really, 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 really rigorous and meticulous, and I love that. So I asked her, and she said yes. So, um, and I haven't regretted it because um, it's, it's a demanding process. Had she had much experience working with dance herself? 
Sorry? Did she have much experience working with dancers? Uh, not to? so much, I don't think. Uh, but now she does, you know, yeah. more and more. And, uh, you know, but I uh, I mean, she has a lot of experience with movement because she used to be part of a clown duo. She's done street performance. So, oh. you know, that's, uh, in a way, that's movement <laughs> choreography. Yes. And I think uh, people who understand, I don't know, it's like, it's people who understand these forms of what these forms say. They they, be, they become like the best observers and directors because it's not about one thing or the other. It's about what each thing says, you know. And I mean, those rules of composition and those rules of structures and form um, apply to everything. Yes. You know, once you understand them well and you keep being curious about it, I think you you know it makes sense. Well, your work has always been based in very strong visuals and yeah. uh, visual ideas, so it would make sense. Does yeah. this feel like your most personal work? Can I? Is that fair to say? Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, I did another piece in 2001 called Su Knows You that was very, very um, quite specific, okay. uh, but this is a larger, you know, this is kind of multiplied by 10. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very big. It's very, um, it's very demanding, and it's very, and it's still. Uh, I feel it's still kind of half of what I would have liked to do. Right. But what I said, like, there's a whole other show in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what it is there is what we want to do now. You know, that kind of concentration of it. And where do you feel like after all of this experience and all of this time doing this, and uh, where do you feel like you are in your career? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I can answer this right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it's 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 you know it's uh it's there there are times of examination, of course, yes. and uh, and because I I have been working in a lot of different fields, um, you know, of music and opera and multimedia and dance, uh, and being offered to do in, yeah, I kind of have times to look at okay, what's the next steps, and at the same time, sometimes it's it naturally goes into the different places, yeah. but uh, it's a tough question. Yeah, I think it is always tough. <laughs> yeah, and it starts. You know, it started at twenty and continues in the thirty. <laughs> every time you hit a decade, it's like <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> and you're still going. Oh, I'm still going. And yeah. I like that you keep the physicality. It's very physical. Like the show is very. Uh, <laughs> Which like, is exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's uh, good. Uh, yeah. I think it's really important for younger dancers to get rid of all these myths. To oh, see totally. It. I mean, I when people, you know, if they ask me how old I am, they go, what do you mean? What? what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and you're still moving? And yeah. my production manager was pretty shocked, too, last week. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because she was making, it was funny, we're laughing, she was making a comment about something. Uh, yeah, well, they're, you know, these old people, and I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what, do, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? No, no, it was funny. It was funny. I, it kind of makes me laugh, yeah. Um, that wouldn't happen to be Carissa Wilcox, would it? Pardon? No. It was that Carissa Wilcox? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Carissa. Um, no, so it was fun. It was fun. It was, we had a good laugh. I can imagine her face, though, once you said, what Oh, yeah. You I told her, and she said, what? <laughs> what? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. I can see her face. Yeah, yeah. So this is just a, a side note. Uh, years and years ago, I, uh, I grew up in Newfoundland. Oh, great. And my first introduction to you was you did a workshop. Oh, not the voice workshop? You bet. Oh, and my God. And you made me say over and over again, I love Newfoundland. And I was oh terrified. My, <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I tell the story about doing that voice because uh, we were doing it across the country. So I was doing the voice workshop in different. But I, I tell the story to so many people of doing it in St. John's. In that theater, right? Oh, yes, yes. And there was about 25 of you. Yes. And it went from, there was a teenager to somebody quite a bit older. I was and the I teenager. And I said, this was one of my, oh, that's amazing. Yes. You're telling me this. I, I was said, so scared, and we were passing around this ball. Yes, yes. And, and, I, I, and I said, I, I love Newfoundland. And you yeah, said, and no. I, <laughs> it was such an amazing experience for me, and that's why I want to go back to Newfoundland. <laughs> yes, you should I love go back. it there. Yeah. But it was an incredible experience for me, too, because... Oh, great. Um, at the time, I'm actually speaking with someone from Newfoundland right after you, but at the time there was such a limited availability of, of yeah. new ideas there. So yeah. that was my first experience That's with you. That's why I have to come back. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're interviewing Kala. Next, I'm interviewing no? Kala, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So hopefully well, I'll, um, make, I'll make a turn there. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope that you have a safe trip when you come to Toronto. Yeah. And uh, people should check out your show. It's down at the Harbourfront Centre. 
Yes. From October 14th and 15th. It's, it's just two nights, nights only, just Friday and Saturday. Please come, please come. It's going to um, be... I, I'm producing it, <laughs> self-producing it. Oh, so my Lord. It's really important that, I mean, it's important that people are there because that's what we do this, you know. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Marie-Jose. Right, Enjoy the rest of your much. day. Okay, okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.